박사님은 북한의 초대로 영변을 방문한 최초의 핵 물리학자로 알고 있는데요. 어떤 이유로 방문을 하게 됐고 그들은 왜 박사님 일행을 초대하게 된 것인지 궁금합니다. So my colleague, Professor John Lewis from Stanford, had been going to North Korea uh, for about a decade. Uh, and during the very difficult time of the transition from uh, the administration of President Clinton to President Bush, uh, the agreement from Clinton time uh, was terminated. Uh, and the North Koreans restarted their nuclear complex uh, and they wanted the Americans to understand that they've restarted the complex and that they're going to build nuclear weapons. And since at that time they had no relations with the American government, with the Bush administration, they invited Professor Lewis to come back because he had been an interlocutor before. And he asked me to come along. Uh, I'm a you know, nuclear scientist uh, from Los Alamos, and so the North Koreans were delighted that he would bring me along and they wanted to show me the progress that they've made towards a nuclear weapon. Well, the, the, the first impression, I'd never been in North Korea, uh, but I grew up after the Second World War in Austria. Uh, and it reminded me of Austria, uh, uh, of being a young lad in a poor, poor country. Uh, but also, uh, as Austria was very friendly, the people were friendly, the children were friendly. So that impression was good, a poor country with friendly people. In the nuclear complex, my overall impression, once they showed me there, uh, is that they were very professional. Uh, and, and very highly skilled. So these were very good nuclear engineers. And what they showed me at the Yangbyon nuclear facility is they have the capability uh, to make plutonium. Uh, and plutonium can be used uh, as the fuel uh, for a nuclear bomb. And again, the facilities were old fashioned, uh, but they were adequate and the people were very well trained and professional. Well, first of all, North Korea developing nuclear weapons, and particularly in the past, let's say, seven, eight years, greatly expanding their nuclear arsenal. From when I first went there, they maybe had built their first bomb in 2004, and now they may have enough of the bomb fuel, both plutonium and highly enriched uranium, for sort of 50 to 60 bombs, let's say. So that, to me, is a very dangerous situation uh, for the world. So it's one of the few countries in the world that has nuclear weapons. Uh, and certainly it's a threat to, to South Korea, to Japan, that are close by. Uh, I do not believe that the North Koreans yet have the capability to reach the United States with a nuclear-tipped missile. They have good missiles, but they haven't, in my opinion, put it all together as yet. But it doesn't matter. It's still dangerous because South Korea you know, is so close and Japan is so close. So it's a real pity that, that the world was not able uh, to stop uh, North Korea from developing these nuclear weapons and can, continuing uh, to build uh, the nuclear weapons. And, the reason I wrote my book, you know, that I called Hinge Point, an inside look at, at North Korea's nuclear program, uh, is so that people can learn the lessons, that they can see what's inside of North Korea. Because I met the nuclear scientists, I met the diplomats, and I write about those meetings. I want the public to be able to read and understand more about North Korea. 
And then I also want them to understand how our governments have failed to, to stop North Korea. It's a very bad idea. And the most important reason is that it will make the Korean Peninsula more dangerous. So instead of less dangerous, because South Korea now thinks it can protect it, it'll make it more dangerous. Because now you have two leaders in the North and South with nuclear weapons, their fingers on the trigger, and all kinds of misunderstanding, miscalculations could potentially lead, uh, instead of a little conventional skirmish, to an exchange of nuclear arms. We haven't had nuclear weapons used since Hiroshima and Nagasaki's. So it's been, you know, all that time, over 70 years, have not had a nuclear weapon used. So the whole world has gone in the direction over these times, and particularly the United States, but also the Soviet Union, to limit the number of countries that have nuclear weapons. And so I very firmly believe the fewer fingers on the nuclear trigger, the better. You don't want to have a nuclear trigger in South Korea. And besides, I think what's not realized here, how much it would cost you, not just in terms of money, but in people. You take good people and you put them in a direction and those nuclear weapons don't do anything for you. The security of South Korea, in my opinion, comes not from the United States alone. It comes from the combination of South Korea and the United States. They're allies. They're in this together. It's being done for South Korea, and it's being done for the United States. The United States like to have a presence, you know, on this side of the Pacific. South Korea is its partner in democracy, and that partnership is all that's required to protect us from North Korea. South Korea does not need nuclear weapons.